Hello and welcome to South to North, coming to you from Johannesburg, South Africa. Poverty, famine, darkness, corruption and tribal wars. These are thoughts associated with images of Africa in many Western media. Even though Africa is the fastest growing region in the world, a recent European survey found that people still see Africa as the hopeless continent. But what happens when Africans make images from their point of view? Can they reverse the negative stereotypes of Africa and Africans? And why is it so important to do so? I have with me two African photographers and an art curator and critic who are doing their bit to present a real and nuanced image of the African continent. All of them were recently involved in Artscape, a photographic series currently running on Al Jazeera. Nigerian-born professor Okwi Enwezo, who is joining us from New York, is one of Africa's global voices. He's currently the director of the Haus der Kunst in Germany and numerous exhibitions at leading art institutions, including the Guggenheim in New York. In the studio, I have with me award-winning South African photojournalist Neo, and joining me later, Nigerian photographer George Osodi, whose book about the Niger Delta has won him accolades across the world. But before we start, let's take a look at this clip. There's been frequent clashes among different ethnic groups. I realized that a lot of people have lost trust in their identity. I felt it was important that we should see this diverse culture as a point of unity, instead of seeing it as something that should divide us as a nation. My responsibility is what I'm doing right now. I don't have anything to offer but as a photographer who is keeping record and documenting this process and showcasing it to everyone who cares to see. Professor Enwenzo, thank you very much for joining us on South to North. We're delighted to have you here. Thanks for having me. In your book, Snap Judgments, you say that portrayals of Africa still amount to Afro-pessimism. What do you mean by that? Well, Afro-pessimism basically represents the, the view that the only way to engage with Africa in terms of the media or in terms of representations of Africa is through the ideas of negation. The negativity of Africa is reflected uh, through images that bear no relationship to the complexity of the everyday and the professional world that Africans occupy. And therefore, Afro-pessimism has come to become a stand-in for not only the very basic understanding of what Africa represents in the world and its place uh, amongst other continents, but also as the way through which we get to know Africa better. Mm -hmm. And this has produced in its wake um, a range of distortions and a range of images that uh, quite frankly, um, sort of needs to be contested or contextualized so that people who have no facility uh, to properly apprehend Africa can understand um, in a critical way that it's a continent comprised of uh, a range of cultural positions, a range of sociopolitical and cultural situations that cannot be molded into one simplistic uh, outlook, mm -hmm. uh, the outlook of disease, of famine, or if you will, of endemic corruption. Mm -hmm. How successful has this continent been in offering an alternative voice, a nuanced image of Africa? I'm thinking about the epic novel Heart of Darkness. So many years after it's been written, it was successful because it portrayed an image that was already active in the Western imagination of our continent. After so many years, post-colonialism, post-independence, how successful have we been in repainting Africa to the world? The challenges that image makers face uh, is really how to bring um, you know, a questioning um, approach to thinking the continent visually to the rest of the world. Um, so the success of doing that has to do with the participation of Africans across all levels of of critical production from being magazine editors 
to making decisions in terms of you know, the things that you put in museums and in galleries and in exhibitions. So Africans have to play a role, not just simply in terms of making images or offering alternative you know, forms of visuality. Africans have to play a role in terms of also occupying the institutional infrastructure that can enable Africans to be able to offer a productive and engaged you know, look on the continent. In what way does your work, Professor, challenge those perceptions? I begin my work by trying to sort of to offer a context for the understanding of the mechanisms that drive artists, photographers, image makers, you know, writers to make work. Um, I begin from the point of view uh, that of the human context in which Africans are embedded. And by understanding that, I think one offers, if you will, a much more robust and complex uh, you know, view of the African imagination. So my work is to first ground what I do in a disciplinary setting before one moves it to, say, a sociopolitical uh, you know, context. Nevertheless, I would like to just simply say, though, that in my own work, I begin from the point of view that Africans have enormous resources of imaginative uh, you know, production to contribute to the rest of the world, not only to understand Africa, but to understand the rest of the world as such. I'm curious to know, Professor, how is the world responding uh, to those images? The media in particular, international media, is often criticized as being only interested in stories of crime, of corruption, of lazy politicians who stay in power and don't know when to step, step down. Meanwhile, we've got art, we've got music, we've got literature. Is the world responding to what we have to offer? Well, if you look at what has gone on in the field of literature in the last decade, um, it's very clear that the world is responding. You know, the works of writers like Teju Cole, Shibamanda Adichie, um, and uh, people like Chris Abani, and um, many other writers. It's very clear that there is an enormous, uh, you, know, you know, renaissance in, in thinking Africa in a very complex way. I think that the mistake that we make is when we become fixated only in the corrective idea about um, images of Africa. I think we need to be able to drive the agenda of what's important and not only to be responding to what we think um, has made Africa be seen uh, in, in a light that is not, uh, for, for, for want of a better word, um, you know, pretty. So I think that the point is that we must drive the agenda and we must also uh, be self-critical when we do drive the agenda. It doesn't mean that by trying to show the positive face of Africa that we sweep everything else under the rug. Mm -hmm. I think that it's the place of artists and writers and thinkers and curators to look at the continent in a very critical light, but not in a one-dimensional way. So I would say that it doesn't do us any good to offer only positive images of Africa any more than it does the world any good if all we are able to see and engage with are those forms of negation that relegates the complexity of the African continent to, um, to just bear, you know, pure media spectacle. Well, let's hear from another guest born in South Africa during the apartheid regime. Neo Nsuma has fought to change perceptions of Africans, not only in the eyes of the world, but also amongst Africans themselves. Welcome, Neo. Thank you, Reddy, for having me. I know that your photographs, your images have been published in international magazines like the Times, the Washington Post. What sort of images were they interested in? They were interested in the images of uh, poverty in South Africa, but photographed with respect. Okay. And they wanted the chaos. They wanted, they wanted that. It was chaotic events, but not photographed in a harsh forum manner. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they just wanted something fresh and I had something to give to the world. I'm going to photograph these people with respect. Mm -hmm. I'm going to photograph them like they really need help. They need to be treated better. Mm -hmm. So it was more like the dignity and the respect that came before anything else, mm -hmm. you know, when I photographed these events. Have you seen a change in the demand for images of Africa? What is it that the world is looking for? What stories does it want to hear and read about Africa? 
The world wants, they still are, you know, stuck in the perception that Africa is all about poverty, all the things that you just mentioned. Corruption, the dark continent. Corruption, the dark country continent. And And there is that. We mustn't deny it, as the professor has rightly said. We have a lot of that, but also we shouldn't forget that we are a vibrant, colorful continent. And it's up to us as the local photographers to show that to the world. And once they see that, they, they, they respond well to it. The reason why my work ended up being published in all those magazines and newspapers abroad it's, and being given the platform to exhibit in overseas countries, it was based on the fact that for the first time they were seeing something positive, something fresh. Would you say they were seeing reality? Because I grew up in a township yeah. and sometimes it amuses me or frustrates me when people have certain perceptions of the township as this dangerous place where you can't go and educate your children. And a lot of professionals came from the township. People with resilience, with spirit, with soul, music, art, theater, it came from the township. So would you say what you are presenting is a real picture, not just the suffering and the negative, which is part of our reality, but also the alternative story. And how do we tell, uh, how do we push those images onto the global stage? That's the real picture right there. All the things that you just mentioned, you know, you go anywhere in a South African township, there's this vibrancy. There's this young boy dancing at the corner of some street. You know, there's this woman singing and being happy and forgetting about the poverty, you know, and everything that is bad that um, the perception of the world about Africa has always been about. I want to bring you in here, Professor Enwenzo. How important is identity in informing the images that we portray about ourselves and even the stories that we tell about ourselves? Well, you know, identity is very important, but it cannot be seen only as a singular um, you know, framework through which uh, an artist or a writer or a curator uh, operates. Um, I certainly am very, very proud of my you know, Nigerian origin. I'm very proud of my Igbo background because it enforced my worldview of how to be in the world and how to navigate the world. So identity is, in fact, very, very important. But a backdrop of identity also has to do with the way we live with others, the way we receive the world of others. And so we cannot um, really be very proud of who we are if that worldview does not inform the way we not only see ourselves, but also the way we project ourselves to the world. Well, we have another guest joining us to talk about uh, imagining Africa and how we are portraying this world. Part magician, part photographer, I think that's the best way to describe our next guest. George Osodi has the ability to entice people through his powerful image to witness environmental Armageddon in the oil fields of the Niger Delta. The pictures have earned him praise worldwide, and he joins us now. Thank you very much. Delta Nigeria. This is the book that you put together, but you're also calling it The Rape of Paradise. Is that your reflection of what actually happened on the Delta Nigeria? I saw the Delta region as a beautiful place, mm -hmm. a paradise that um, it still is. It's just that uh, what is happening at the moment is more of an artificial thing, and uh, it's still got that tendency to be the paradise that I think it is. I have an agenda, and uh, simply more of wanting to keep record. These are critical images, and they make a powerful commentary. Is the space more open for this kind of output? At this stage, we should be talking about wars in Africa, you know. I think that era is gone. It's mm -hmm. gonna be more of an intellectual war, you know. There have been many Western photographers, writers, who have made a name for themselves, taught at universities all over the world, and uh, their work is based on their depiction, their interpretation of Africa. I think there's space for all of that, but what about Western scholars and academics who are writing, who are uh, portraying Africa? Do they have a particular responsibility uh, to portray Africa in a particular way? 
I don't know if it's a responsibility of academics to help us see Africa in a better light, but I certainly do believe it's a responsibility of academics to help us shape an understanding of the complexity of the situation in Africa. Ultimately, though, what is very important to, you know, to put forward, I am a strong advocate that Africans like George, like Neo, uh, are successful simply because they are embedded in the context in which ideas are produced. So when you see George's work, when you see Neo's work, you cannot just simply dismiss that work. You have to face up to that work. And simply because the artists are alive, you know, they are participating in the uh, contextualization of their project, and therefore it forces the academic, it forces the critics, not only to just simply look at their images, but also to re respond and to reflect on the thinking behind the production of those images. So I am very, very encouraged by the fact that there are a number of very you know, significant voices such as Georgia Neo emerging from the continent. Thank you, Professor Enwenzo, for giving us your time and sharing your insights with us. Thanks indeed. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You, you've made the transition from um, hardcore news to fashion. Show us some of the work uh, that, that you've um, brought for us. The reason why I really, really enjoy working with them is because they also um, advocate the same principle, the same things, the same agenda that I've been pushing all along, trying to represent... Africans in a positive light to the world. Let's have a look at that. Indigenous and the title the, is actually yeah, Rediscovering, Rediscovering Africa. Africa. So. Would you say uh, this is another celebration of Africa as much as it's depicting a very sad and painful and bloody chapter, you have gone out of your way to find stories of survival and tenacity? For, to me, it's, it's more of a, a book of hope. That's how I see it. It's uh, because I believe in the new Africa and the new challenge. Uh, I believe in targeting the, 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 the younger generation of Africans who are much more well exposed. Do you think international uh, photographers and storytellers still have a place on, on the continent or should it be African stories told by Africans? I, I don't agree with you in that. It's a question. Actually, what do you think? Fine. I think they, they do have its place. I mean, it's a free for all. It's a global world. Mm. It's just about looking at things from different perspectives. You, you are also doing uh, work with uh, Niger traditional Nigerian monarchs. You, you visited them. You're telling their story in pictures. Tell me about that. <laughs> I've done you know, quite a lot of uh, different projects on photography, trying to look at the monarchy institution in the country, looking at it from a cultural perspective. Nigeria is a very big country and um, it's got huge population as well as uh, diverse culture and uh, it's very multi-ethnic. Multi you know, for the first time, I find myself settling down doing portraits, more of environmental portraits of these different monarchs who actually existed even way back before the colonial you know, inculcation into the continent. They were rulers, they had their kingdoms, they were in control, and uh, the people listened to them. So I, I, it was quite, to me, uh, interesting to celebrate them and uh, bring out these images to a much more foreground where people, Nigerians as well, who have lost contact with mm. cost, cost, customs, begin to reflect and see. Relive the history or recapture yeah, it in some you know, way. Yeah. That's important. We mustn't lose it. And I think that, that, that is the power of photography for yeah. me, that you see the transitions that a, 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 a people goes through. You see their highs and their lows, yeah. and you preserve it for posterity. But I want to talk about Al Jazeera's uh, Artscape program. What did that mean for you? My project, which is the generation of change, is still the very generation that I've always been photographing all along. So this time was just to revisit the very people that I started photographing early in my career, just to see how, how we have grown as people, as people in the industry, how, how the changes in the country has affected us in, in, the, in the positive light, in the, bad, in the bad light. I just wanted to retrace you know, all the steps and just to, come to, to, to kind of capture 
all of that, you know, the history basically is like recapturing history, something that I've walked through and relieved. And um, I spend a lot of time with the, the, there's, there's a new trend called this cotton is they show up with their clothes and they just live up their lives crazy. And materialistic youth. Materialistic youth and really they don't have the same drive that we had. And now going back and now seeing all those kids, you know, living the way they live, like what's the purpose in that? But then it boiled down to one thing, like, I think they don't have the same drive. You know, they don't have anything that they, they strive into. They're not running away from anything or they're not trying to... They're living in a free they're, country, They're living in a free country. So they don't really feel they that unless I push hard, I'm not going, I'm to, not make going to make it. I'm not going to make it, Or the sense of urgency that stems from knowing that doors are closed because of, you, of the colour of, of your skin. Of, of your the colour of your skin. There were no restrictions. And yeah, for you, have... George, the artscape, what does that mean? Um, well, to me, it was more of a a platform to actually um, showcase Africa from my perspective. There's a lot of heritage and customs that are found in many of these kingdoms. For this project, I really wanted to portray this. People travel from various places around the Delta region to pay homage to the river and also worship the god that is shrine here. It has always been my dream to um, talk about Africa as a continent. I am so much in love with Africa. I, I don't think there's any other place to be except uh, Africa. Again, the world is global. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, to me it's more of a, a challenge of trying to represent uh, our image to the global landscape, trying to, again, I mean, I, I don't want to, like, do images to please the Western audience, but it's more of uh, telling the world, this is Africa, this is who we are. And, uh, you know, it's a very special continent, and things are done specially here. And it's easier for us as Africans to tell our stories, because we know where, we feel the pulse, we know where it hurts. Do you think Africans have a particular responsibility? I mean, I asked the professor that question earlier. Uh, should there be a mission attached to our work, whether you are a journalist or a photographer or a writer? Yes. Where is the fun in all of it? Or is there a place for fun? <laughs> I think as Africans, we have a great responsibility to portray Africa in the best um, light possible, not deducing the fact that there are issues behind, you know, you know, as image makers, we don't have to play down on that fact that we have problems here and there. But at the same time, we, we have also triumphed over the years. You know, we have a new generation of Africans who have done great things, you know, against all odds, mm -hmm. and uh, they deserve to be celebrated. You know, in most cases, someone who, who, fly, who comes in from the outside world may not really get Grasp. to feel, yeah, grabs or feel revive, you know, but then because you're an insider and it's easier for you to understand your fellow uh, African when it, it relates, it tells a story. Uh, you know, you know when someone is lying. <laughs> I don't. Yes, as an African, if, if your colleague, if, 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 if someone is lying to you as an African, you know. But as, as, a, as a stranger, you know, you can not be sold know. Exactly, yeah. I was you about to think actually get to that. I have to think about yeah. that, but I'm not sure yeah. about that. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's happened to me a lot while photographing, while working on projects in Africa. You know, you go to places, you know when they are telling the truth and when they are lying. But because you know, you it is now left for, for, to you to represent it in the manner at which you're trying to portray Right. The true representation of... Well, George, you, know, you spoke story. earlier about a new generation of Africans. You also spoke about that, a new generation of Africans that have a history, that have hope, that have optimism, yes. and that have something to give to the world. So I think the two of you uh, belong to that generation of Africa, and we look forward to many more stories in the form of images, photography, that will come out of your lenses. Thanks indeed for joining us on South to North. You're welcome. Thank you, Rainy. Well, thank you for joining me on South to North. Remember, you can tweet your questions, comments and opinions to at AJ South to North or find us on Facebook. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Bye-bye.